Bless the Lord. I'm Prophet Thomas Warren, and welcome to Walking in the Spirit. Today we're going to be uh, in the book of Ephesians. In this book of Ephesians, Paul was trying to illustrate to the people how rich, how wealthy they really were. And they didn't understand the wealth that God had given unto them through the promise of the inheritance. Now, I know for me, it was hard for me to comprehend the wealth that God has given unto me. I don't know about you, but I can give you testimonies about how God has shown himself to be faithful in situations where I didn't think I had and realized I'd already had it. And I'll be telling you about these here. Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples of them as the lesson goes forward. Now we want to start in Ephesians. Oh my goodness. Let's start off in Ephesians chapter one. On verse three, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I'll read that again. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Going to verse 7. In him we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins according to the grace, according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mysteries of him, I'm sorry, having been made known to us the mysteries of his will according, according to his good pleasure with how wealthy we are, because we are made to sit in heavenly places. Now, it's hard to comprehend that you are made to sit, you use made to sit in heavenly places because you're looking in your, you're looking at it in your natural eye. You're not looking at it in the spirit. See, God has given us glory to God. He, God has given us his spirit. He's given us his spirit. He's given us the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is a communication between us and heaven. The Holy Spirit is the, communi is the communicator or the mediator between us and heaven. Okay, God gives information to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit passes it on to us. God gives information to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit passes it on to us. Now, that put us or seat us in heavenly places. That by itself seats us in heavenly places. So it's important to understand how important the Holy Spirit is to a believer. Because he says over in Romans chapter 8, for as many are led by the Spirit. Well, where is the Spirit at? Well, he had to put the Spirit in you. He had to put the Spirit inside you. So therefore, it will be a part of you to communicate with you. And it says over here in our verse. Who are we at? Um, go to verse. Verse 4. Uh, yeah, verse 4. I mean, chapter 4, verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind and be renewed in the spirit. Now, when he's talking about being renewed in the spirit of your mind, OK, this spirit he's talking about is God's spirit speaking to your mind. God's spirit speaking to your mind, you being led by the spirit of God. So be renewed by that spirit that God has given you, because the spirit that God has given you is going to give you a whole new insight on how to look at your life. Now, I know for myself. Every morning that I wake up in my meditation, before I get out of bed, before I start my day, I meditate. I begin to meditate and see what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me, how I'm going to carry my day out. Because the Lord knows things that I don't know. He sees things that I don't see. And he sees the possibilities of things that I don't see. So therefore, I count and depend on him each and every day to give me a daily Give me daily instructions on how to carry out my day. Now, I don't know about you, but it says over in Deuteronomy chapter 8, uh, verse 18, 818. And, he, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, that he may establish his covenant. Now, we have an inheritance of a promise in this new covenant that he's still working out today. 
that he's still working out today. He wants you to, to, to experience the life that Jesus Christ came for. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and that you may have this here life more abundantly. So Holy Spirit is going to lead us into our abundant life. Now, for me, I consider myself uh, one who's handy, uh, very, 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 very handy with my hands. And, I, and then the Lord knows what he's placed in my heart to do. So every time he give me an instruction on what he want me to do, now, especially when it comes to purchasing something. So I'm the type of person that the Lord would say, gather this here script or that script of something or an old piece of wood or this, that, and I'll, I'll gather it and and I'll store it up until I hear another imp uh, instructions for him. A lot of times, man, I stockpile wood. Uh, I have a place where I've, I've, I've made so therefore I can, when he put it in my heart, to stockpile wood because I, I realize that when he's saying grab that or grab that or go get this or go get that, He's doing it not for it, not at that moment, but he has a plan for later on for it. It's just like when I got the wood uh, for this table right here. Now, I notice here in the studio, everything, the two, my studio is not that big. So, therefore, everything in here, I had, I had uh, the Lord led me to make. I was inspired to make. So, therefore, it will fit the space. Okay. Uh, this table here. The wood here I had for this table, it was, I just had it probably more than a year. It was probably laying around. This table here, when I made it, um, I think I had already had this at the top. You've probably seen it in a, another set with uh, one of the table legs that I put. Uh, that was my small table. And the Lord showed me that I already had this here top, and I had just had to make the bottom frame. I already had the wood for the leg. Now, nothing that which he put in my heart that to have, right? He gave it to me in, in the form of a desire in the form of a desire. And in that desire, okay, the, the desire has to become full grown, okay, for him to show you where it's at. Because he told me everything I need is already at the house. It's already in the house. So therefore, when he puts something in my heart to do something, I understand I already have it. I don't have to go look for it. I already have it. It's already, it's already in my possessions. Now, what I have to do, just like a jigsaw puzzle, I have to put it together. So, therefore, he's already enriched me for every need in which I have. Like, and I think I'll show you pictures of my studio. Everything I have in, in the studio is custom designed and custom made to fit inside. Uh, me, I'm the type of person, I don't like color, clutter, and I don't like oversized things. So, therefore, I like things to be just so. All right. And, and the Lord knows that. So therefore, uh, everything in here I've custom made. So therefore, it will fit. Well, it's not troubling me when I'm out here and I'm working. And I spend a lot of time out here. My wife tell you, when I wake up in the morning, Lord give me instructions. The first place I head is out here in the studio. OK. And I head out here to to do what he said for me to do. OK. And I thought I try to do my best to follow the instructions. I don't put any I don't add anything and I don't take anything away from Holy Spirit. For it is he that gives you the power to get well. Where is your wealth at? See, my wealth for myself is built up and stored up in God speaking to me and giving me instructions. I'm not one. I'm not. I used to be one to go and work, okay, and try to make a lot of money. But but what to what to to but to no end. I didn't see the. I got stopped seeing the value in it. If you would, I stopped seeing the value in it. I um. I was with a um, a friend of mine, whom parent had passed. And, 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 and their parent was a very successful man. He was a very, this, he was a very, her father was a very successful man. Oh my goodness, man. And, and we went to his, uh, um, his condo. He lived in a high rise building and he was moving his stuff out. He had so many things that had so much, I mean, very, very valuable furniture, very pictures that was insured for thousands and thousands of dollars. Okay, he had a wall full of all his uh, accomplishment, all his certificates, all his, uh, um, uh, what would you call them? All his plaques, all his uh, rewards, all his, his, his accomplishments were on that wall. And then there was a bin downstairs, a trash bin downstairs next to where we parked uh, the moving truck at as we was taking some of the furniture and stuff out of the apartment. And as I was taking down all these his certificates, 
and the, all this here is it's uh, accomplishments, it's awards, and all these things. And I was asking her, I said, what, do we, uh, what are we doing with these things? What are we doing with them? And she said, well, Thomas, she says, Let, let's throw them in the trash. Let's throw them in the trash. And it, hit, and, it, and, it, and, it, and it hurt my heart that he worked hard all his life and everything that was valuable to him that he hung on the wall, that he looked at it and was probably proud of all of his successes, all his benefits, that was going in the trash. See, that lets me know that regardless of what you build here on earth, you take none of that stuff with you. We threw all that stuff in the trash. And as you see, I probably get a little emotion about it because a lot of times we work so hard and we chase things but what we should be chasing is the riches that the Lord has for us. We should be chasing him. He's, do not store your riches up on earth, but in heaven. Chase, chase the Lord, chase the Lord. And see, and everything, I'm, I'm the type of person like this. If the Lord tells me to leave all of what I have right now and move to another place and don't take nothing with you, I'll, I'll trust him. I'm tr I've done it several times. I'll leave everything I have, but I'm not concerned about it. Okay, I left vehicles in different states. I've left furniture in my house in different states. Okay, and just and just and where you say go, Lord, boom, go. Okay, and I found out that he he restores. He restores. I remember when I lived in Colorado. I'm being very transparent here. I've been in Colorado, and um, and my wife and I we was we was going through some things and. And she decided, because we still had the house here in Richmond, okay, she decided she was going to move back here. So one morning I woke up and the Holy Spirit said, you better, uh, you better say something to her. She's getting ready to leave you. And she asked me, she said, well, you going to work today? And for some reason or another, I ain't going to say for some reason or another, the Holy Spirit had already told me that she was going to leave. And I looked at her and I told her, I said, no, I'm not going. I'm going to be home today. And, she, and, I said, I, and I told her, I said, the Holy Spirit told me that you're getting ready to leave. She said, I am. We are already packed up. Right, they had they, they had already packed their things up. They were ready to go load the car up. Her, her mother had flew in from Ohio to help her drive back from Colorado, Colorado coming here. And I'm 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 I'm, I'm saying to myself, okay, what is this here? Okay, then because we was going through something, I was like, I was sort of happy, you know what I mean? I was sort of joyous about it. I'm like, yeah, go ahead on and go. I'm cool. And I'm here by myself. I got my own place now, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking not like a married man that my family's leaving. I'm thinking like a single man. And so when she packed up and she was leaving, and I remember her leaving and I think it was like two weeks after she had left and we hadn't communicated from the time she left for those two weeks. I remember sitting in the, the I was sitting in the living room in a recliner and I was looking at because we had a real nice apartment and I was looking at TV okay and and I and I dozed off and I went to sleep in the recliner and I and I and the Lord spoke to me in a dream okay um, and he said to me in the dream, okay, leave here. You can stay here and die or you can leave and live. You can stay here and die or you can leave and live. Well, naturally, I want to live. So what did I do? I said, okay, Lord. I said, okay, what do I do, Lord? I got, I got all this furniture here. Okay, I got two vehicles I have to worry about taking. I had a van and I had my truck. And the Lord says to me, you can stay here and die or you can leave and live. Now, that was my choices. Stay or die, leave or live. Stay or die, leave or live. So my mind was like, okay, I want to live. So I'm packing up everything I can. I'm putting everything I can on my truck, okay? Because I wanted to take my truck with me. I, you know what I'm saying? My van, I, would, I left with uh, the person who was working with me, okay? And I know he would take care of it. Later on, I, I wind up uh, sending him the title to the truck so he can have the van, okay? But I have a truck and I put whatever I can get on that truck. Okay, when they left, they had left some things and some things I knew that they wanted, that they was important to them, but they just couldn't fit them all in the vehicle that she was driving. So therefore, I loaded them on my truck, okay, and I made sure I loaded their stuff first, okay, before I took any of my stuff. And then I just grabbed the things that I want, like my clothes. I think I had a, a guitar, stuff that I found was valuable to me, okay, my, my paperwork. I loaded that all, I would have packed the truck. Make sure it was covered up real nice so as I'm driving down the highway, it doesn't blow off anything, okay? And so I'm headed, I'm headed, I'm headed back to, uh, back to here to Richmond, Virginia. And so, uh, and I remember before I left, the Spirit of the Lord told me to call her. And at the moment I had called her, she was um, at an outreach, 
and she was talking to a pastor and she was beginning to tell the pastor that she hadn't talked to me in over two weeks, yada, yada, yada. Right. And I, uh, and I, uh, uh, <laughs> and at that moment while she was speaking to him, I called her after two weeks. Right. And at that, in that moment, in that moment, I want you to see God in this here. And at that moment I called her, she was talking to her cause he had just told her, right. That, okay, your husband's going to call. Your husband's going to call. You have to know that he's going to call. And at that moment, I called. So he gave her privacy, and we, we spoke, and I let her know that I was coming back. Okay, now she's still dealing with the pain and the hurt of, uh, of what took place in Colorado. So she wasn't looking for me to come back. And truth to the matter, I wasn't looking to come back here either. I wanted to move on. I just want to drop their stuff off and, and continue on my way because I'm going to go back to what I, what I was familiar with me. But that wasn't God's plan. You hear what I'm saying? That wasn't God's plan. So as the Holy Spirit had led me to, to pack that vehicle up and told me to get away from that, I could stay and live, me stay and die or leave and live, I, I decided that I wanted to live. So I packed that truck up and I got on the road. And I think I drove through about 30, it's about 30 hour drive from here to Colorado, okay? And I think I drove, I drove, drove straight, as a matter of fact, I did. I drove straight through, okay? No rest, no sleep, 30 hours straight. So I'm driving, coming on in. So by the time I get here, right, and I get knock on the door, and I look in the house, hear what I'm saying to you. I look in the house, house empty. The house is empty. Why is it empty? Because I left all of our furniture in Colorado. Remember, we had moved from Richmond here to Colorado, and we had packed the truck up, okay, uh, and we had a, what was that, that one of them pod things, okay, that we had delivered with all the furniture, okay? We left all that in Colorado. We left everything in Colorado. When I say left everything, okay, when she left me, she left everything. When I left, I left everything, all the furniture. When I say all the furniture, bedroom furniture, everything. So therefore, we come, I come here and there's an empty house. And I see how empty the house is. And it dawned on me, I said, okay, Lord, you're going to have to supply our needs here. You're going to have to supply our needs here. Okay, now I want you to know that he's, he's refurnished the house totally. He's refurnished the house totally, okay? Because he said, uh, stay and die, leave or live. When I chose his way, leaving and living, okay, he, he now he supplied. Now he supplied. See, when you're following the Lord, the Lord wants to supply for you. He wants to give you things that you need. But you have to make some tough decisions sometimes to leave some stuff behind. You can't take this stuff with you. You can't take this stuff with you, man. I'm here to tell you right now. You can't take it with you. And I think, I don't know whether it's his sorry is come, sorrowful is coming from my heart, but I believe it's the heart of the Lord crying out to you saying, you can't take it with you. Store up your riches in heaven. Store up your riches in heaven. You can't take none of this stuff with you. You can't take any of this with you. When, let me tell you, it's not like you're going to have a U-Haul truck behind you or hurt down the hearse, okay, that's taking you to the grave site with all your stuff, okay? All, when, you, when you leave here, all, that, all, the, all the things that you acquire in this life, it leaves behind. So if you have the attitude or take the attitude is none of this stuff here is more important than my relationship with my Heavenly Father who can supply all my needs according to His riches and glory because it tells me in Ephesians, now to him who is able to do it seemingly abundantly above more than I can ask or think. I'm trying to get over that so I can get it right. Okay. Because he has a plan. He has a plan. And sometimes in this plan for you, you have to tear off some things. You have to be script of some things. You have to be script of some things. It says verse 20 in uh, Ephesians 3. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that above all that you will ask or think according to the power that works in you. Now, where is the power? That power that works in you is God's spirit working in you, giving you instructions day and night, day and night, day and night. To be many that are led by his spirit to these are the sons and daughters of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit, for these are the sons and daughters of God. Are you a son and daughter of God? Now, when God is leading you and he's asking you to leave some stuff behind, I'm telling you, 
leave it behind. It's worth it to leave it behind because he can do exceedingly above more than what you ask or think, okay? Because he, he's not asking you to leave anything behind that he's not willing to replace. Hear me out. The Lord is not asking you to leave anything behind that he's not willing to replace. The Lord is not asking you to leave anything behind that he's not willing to replace. See, we, we, we see in our natural eye, but we have to learn how to see in the spirit realm where God has things stored up for us. And he can't get the things that he stored up for us unless we leave some things behind. God wants us to leave some things behind so therefore we can get the things that he has for us. I remember this is uh, man, over 20 some years ago. I was in a ministry and. Um, Oh, my goodness. Where, where were we at? Uh, we was in Waldorf, Maryland. And in the ministry, how the ministry was funded, the guys would go out and work. So, therefore, the, the ministry uh, was funded through the work that the guys would go out and do. Well, in this particular instance here, I was uh, assigned to go to the, do uh, this tear out, which was here in, in Richmond area. OK, uh, me and I think it was about five other guys. Right. We went to uh, we did work for this man who did uh, construction work. And, um, and he had a contract and a job to do a tear out in the store. Now, we was only supposed to be there for a day. We was only supposed to be there for a day. Hear me out what I'm saying to you. We was only supposed to be there for a day. But we wind up being there for over a week. And I, I, mean, I don't know where this emotion's coming from, I mean, but I'm going to keep moving anyway. And we was, we was there for more than a week. Mm. Mm. Give me time. And if you understand, when you're doing demolition work, it's a very dirty job. And there were, um, we was dusty, we was dirty, man, and we only had one set of clothes, and we wound up staying there a week to do this tear out, okay? And when that period of the time had ended and we had finished, oh, my goodness, that's the only thing that we could possibly think about is getting back, man, so we can get out of these dirty clothes. Now, the, the, uh, the person who owned our company, Okay, he purchased us uh, underwear so we can take a shower and we can sleep in fresh underwear. But at the next day going to work, we had the same old dirty clothes on, okay? We had the same dirty clothes on. And we would go and we was diligent about going and doing what we, uh, we, we were assigned to do, right? And we did it with a whole heart. Okay, none of us, not one, I don't remember, not one complaint during that time about doing it because we understood how important it was to keep the ministry going. We put ourselves aside, and what what inspired us was keeping the ministry going. I remember one time, um, me and two other guys, me and two other guys was on the job site, and it was lunchtime. So we walked across the street. We went to uh, Burger King, and we were sitting at the table, dirty. And we was talking about the things of God. And there was these two older ladies that were sitting behind us. They were, they were listening to our conversation, but we didn't know it. But we were just talking about the things of God. And that's what kept us. Our, fine, our, our focus was on God and the things of God. It wasn't on what we were doing or what we was going through. It was focused on God. Mm. Ooh, I didn't realize how hard this one was. But anyway, mm. and as they got up to leave, mm. and as they got up to leave, they stopped. And they said, we've never, ever heard young men talk about God the way you guys talk about God. My God. Mm. But that was our strength. He was our strength, and our mind and our focus was on what God had called us to do and assigned us to do in that moment. Anyway, by the time we had finished the tear out and we were on our way back to Maryland, and all of us in our mindset was like, can't wait to get out of these clothes, can't get wait to get out of these clothes. Well, anyway, by the time we get back to the uh, ministry, the housing unit which I stayed in, I had just moved in this, I just moved from one housing unit to another. And the guys who, well, the way the system was, is everybody put their laundry in, make sure you have your initials and everything in it, right? And, and, and all the laundry get done for, from building to building. I think there was like three, one, two, three buildings, three buildings, 
right? And in each unit, there had to be like 50 guys per building that stayed in the building. And what everybody did, you put all your bed in this was one big, big, big lump, and there was a person that was assigned to wash everyone's clothes, okay? And, and after they washed them and dried them, they would fold them up and they would return them back to you according to your initials in your clothing, all right? Now, I was moved to this new building, and um, remember, we were gone a week. And the day that we left was the day, the wash day that was assigned to the person who washed clothes. So I put my dirty clothes in there, okay? And the first day, wash the clothes, and he fold the clothes, and he put them in the area where you're supposed to go and collect your clothing, right? And my clothes sat there for a while. Well, in this ministry, there are new people. There were new people coming in all the time, and some people that came in didn't have any clothes or anything. But my clothes sitting there, some new people that came in, and they had given my clothes to some of the new people who came into the ministry. Okay. Um, and when I got there, and I seen that I had no more clothes because I all my clothes I hadn't washed in two weeks because I was getting ready to move from one house to the other, so I didn't put them in that house, right? And uh, then the following week, right, I'm still working, okay, in the balance of my clothes. So when I get back, I had no clothes, none whatsoever. And I was hot. I was fired up. I was mad. Hear what I'm saying? I was mad. And in my anger, I hadn't realized that God had already put it on someone's heart, okay, just to start resupplying me. And one of the guys that went out of town with us, um, had came up and knocked on my door because he seen that I was, I was mad, right? And he said, um, my parents just brought me all these clothes, these new clothes. And he said, but the Lord just told me to give them to you. And all of a sudden, he just started giving me clothing. Now I had, I wound up with more clothes than I had before. Hear what I'm saying to you, newer clothes. For he had taken the old stuff and he had gotten rid of them for me. Okay, but he gave me all new clothes. And the Lord said to me at that moment, you can try to hold on to old stuff. If you try to hold on to old stuff, I can't give you the new stuff that I have for you. And from that moment, that was the biggest lesson in my life because I realized if God taking something from you, okay, if something is taken from you, God, because you are his, he wants to, he want, he wants to, replenish you if you would he wants to replenish you he want to make sure that your his beloved is well taken care of